Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and to your girl Ogi. We are here to discuss pension, so just relax your mind and enjoy it. There's many things you need to know about pension. So many. What does it mean? Why am I even paying it? What percentage are they even removing from my salary? What am I even going to get it? That one is very very important. <laughs> and a lot more. I'll break it down as I can. So first of all, what is pension? Pension is simply a fund into which money is paid during an employee's employment period and upon retirement, payment is made to him or her periodically. That is it. It's simply my money being deducted from my salary every month and paid into this fund and when I retire, you give me back my money. That is it. So either way, it's still my money. Hope that is clear. There are some terminologies we need to really understand, like pension fund administrators, pension commission. All right, let's stop there. So what is pension fund administrator? A pension fund administrator is a company licensed by the pension commission to manage your fund, invest it, and upon retirement pay you. They keep good records of it because they are regulated by pension commission definitely. And upon your retirement, you go to them, arrange your plan plan and pay you periodically. Pension fund custodians, these are companies that are licensed by pension commission charged with the responsibility of safeguarding pension funds. They are simply banks that are approved by pension commission. We have Zenith Bank, we have UPA Bank and some few banks that are approved by pension commission. How it works is this. If in a month you've prepared a schedule for pension and you want to remit it, you want to pay this pension, it's for you to attach a check. If it is a check you're going to pay with, on the check, you just address it to the particular pension fund administrator. If the Stambic IBTC, if it is Crusader, Selling, Power, Arms, Pension, and the likes, you write pay to so so pension fund administrator the amount, attach it with the schedule, take it to the bank. That bank is the custodian taking this money, safeguarding it at that point. Yes. And once they receive the money, they send the message to the pension fund administrator. So they all work hand in hand, they are all regulated under PENCOM. Pension fund administrator on their own part would send you a customer a, a credit alert. Now it's not coming from the bank. You don't get alerts from the bank saying your account has been credited with this. No. You get that message from your pension fund administrator. If the Stambic IBTC, they send you a credit alert with such amount has been credited to your retirement savings account. Once they receive that money, they, they manage it, invest, and they don't just invest anywhere. So don't be scared about your money, it's safe. The PENCOM has a way of doing this. There is a particular security they can invest in. They can't invest randomly. So let's talk about how you get your PIN. Oh, you're just getting your first job and you don't have a PIN. So how are they going to start paying you? You know, such kind of question. What you just do is you can Pick any pension fund administrator of your choice. You as an employee have the right to choose the pension fund administrator of your choice. So you can actually just walk into their office with your details and your ID, fill it, and in a day or two, your PIN is out. So that is what you can present to your employer for remittance of your pension. But when you get to a particular organization and you don't have a PIN, some can contact a pension fund administrator of your choice and generate your PIN, send it to you. It works either way. Getting a PIN is no big deal at all. Let's talk about how you can get your money because that is what everybody wants. So many persons are scared of pension and skeptical about it. We are all into this together. At a point I was like, how will you be collecting 8% of my salary and putting it where I don't know? How shall I mind that when I retire, I'm going to get my money? There are so many people of age that have retired, that have labored hard 
are out there struggling on how to get back their money. So we too are scared and I'm like, oh, if, if they are going through all of this, then I don't need to go through this stress. I don't like stress. Give me my money. Let me chop. When that time comes, it's a thing. Ah, that is not nice. <laughs> that is not nice. So we need to plan. It's a way of helping you plan your retirement. So don't be skeptical about it. Things have really changed and the system is better. Yes. So upon retirement, you can go to them and based on what you have, they will make your plans and tell you how it will come in. If you should stop work at the age of 50, probably you got disengaged or you, but provided you are 50 years anyway and you don't have a job, you can actually go and you're free to start getting your money. The less than say, okay, what if I'm out of job and I'm not 50? Am I still going to get my money? Yes. Once you stay out of job for four months and you need your money, you can go to them and they pay you 25% of your money. That is it. So things are really becoming flexible and interesting. So pension is super dope. <laughs> Let's talk about what if I'm in an organization and they don't do such remittance, there's nothing like pension going on. That isn't right. If you're an employer of labor and you're watching this, once you have up to three employees on your list, you're required by law. I say you're required by law to pay. Make sure you pay your employees pension every month. You have to do that for me times after seven days of deducting it from your employee's salary and you're not remitting it, you're bound to be punished by law. <laughs> So make sure you remit judiciously. So we're going to dive into the practical aspect, but before we do that, let's just have an overview of how it looks like. The minimum requirement for remittance is for the employee, 8% of your basic housing and transport. For the employer, it's 10% of the employee's basic housing and transport, making it a total of 18% to be remitted every month then as an employee you might want it to be more than that you know you might just want to have a better percentage paid into your accounts for so that when you retire you go still there enjoy the chop big big yeah it's permitted you can actually request that they deduct more than eight percent is your salary anyway so they can collect ten percent as the case may be instead of eight so that one will just be like a voluntary contribution you're doing that is it but mandatorily eight percent employee and ten percent employer that is it guys so let's go there so guys we have the serial number the pension number or pin we have first name last name Employee, basic salary, housing allowance, transport allowance. It's usually basic housing and transport. This employee's monthly contribution will be deducted from the monthly salary, but this employer's portion won't reflect in the employee's salary. So let's just you know, work with our normal assumptions. So the P is usually, I think, 10 or thereabout. You can get this number from any pension fund administrator of your choice. Well, as in figures here, basic housing and transport. That is if the organization has um, other allowance, you can state it in this way. If not, for most organizations, they stop at basic housing and transport, so this will serve as their gross salary. But if they have other allowances, we won't call it gross anymore. So we'll just a total basic housing and transport, which is the sum of these three. Now for the employee money contribution is 8% of the total here 
for the employer is 10 percent of this total yeah. the total money pension for that will be this plus j so at the end of the month this is what you're expected to receive as your pension they meant to be credited by the by the pension fund administrator of this total monthly pension. This is on a monthly basis, just for you to arrange your work, make it look more positive and visual, and ensure you file. This is what's going to contribute. This is what the employer will contribute, and this is the total the employer is meant to be credited with at the end of the month. And this must reflect in the payroll. Yes. As part of the deduction, this is simply it. And when you're true, you make sure you file. So, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Yes, subscribe because in the next video, I'll be dropping a step by step guide on how to get your pension commission certificate. Yes, you know, some organizations that into contract and all of that require a pension commission certificate to go ahead with their bidding process and the rest. So, make sure you subscribe. So you won't miss out on it. Thank you.